Good morning. Good morning. I love hearing all the happy humming noise uh, before we begin service today. Welcome one and all to the All Saints Sunday service today. You know, I was thinking about this this morning that some of you um, woke up happy that you had an extra hour of sleep and hit the ground with a smile on your face. Others of us, however, you know that it's a struggle to get up and make it to church. So welcome to all of you who had that struggle and still made it. And those are who are having a difficult morning all around. Welcome, one and all. And welcome to those of you on, who are joining us online. We're glad that you're me meeting with us as well. So welcome, one and all. We do have an All Saints Day ceremony that will follow the sermon. There are extra candles. If you have a loved one that you would like to remember uh, during the hymn following this, that you are welcome to come and light a candle for those loved ones as well, too. And then one last thing, Tuesday is election day, right? If you haven't yet cast your vote, I and the ELCA encourage you to do so. We believe in good citizenship. And I do admit that it took me about 90 minutes to go through that ballot. So uh, take your time. And um, if you need help looking, I did look up like all the ballot issues online. There are places to do that. If anyone needs help, I'm glad to direct you to not how to vote, but how to find out the information as well too. So again, welcome one and all. In the beginning, God called the world into being, saying, <laughs> In the fullness of time, Jesus came from God to us, saying, I am the light of the world. In our everyday life, we see the work of the saints. So let us give thanks for the saints this day, and let us worship God. seated. The act of confessing our sin is not simply a recitation of our faults and wrongs, 
but also an opportunity to receive God's mercy and share in that abundant grace. Confident of God's love for us, let us offer our prayers first in silence. Holy God, we ask for your help, your power, your spirit, so that we can amend our lives and grow more each day into the image of Christ. We confess that we fear what is different. We confess that it's easier to lock the doors of our community than to receive those who don't look like we look, love like we love, or vote the way we vote. We confess that we have not lived out your call to share an abundant life and unconditional love. We believe that you have the power to turn us around to a more inclusive way of living. So we ask you to do that. We ask you to give us the courage to change. We ask that you give us the energy, intelligence, imagination, and love to be your people and all we say and do. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and thus free to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. We have a new song of praise today, and uh, Larissa's going to play it through once. giving thanks for the faith of the Ephesians, the writer of this letter prays that they might understand the wisdom, hope, and power of God that is emboldened in Jesus Christ. The reading. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined, destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption, 
as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. In echoes of the prophet Isaiah and Mary's song of praise, Jesus reveals surprising things about who enjoys blessings and who endures woe. He invites his disciples to shower radical love, blessing, forgiveness, generosity, and trust, even on enemies and outsiders. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Okay, so I'm reading beginning at the 17th verse, which you don't have printed. So I, um, it seems to go well with it when I was working on my sermon. So please listen, and then the written word will begin at verse 20. Jesus went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil, because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated like false prophets. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
One Sunday at the end of October, when Randy and I lived and served in Bratislava, Slovakia, a church member came up to us and asked if we knew how the Slovaks celebrated All Saints Day. Well, I admitted that we did not, and he told us that it was his favorite holiday in Slovakia, as it was so meaningful and beautiful. So I'm going to tell you about that. In Slovakia, like many other places in the world, this holiday still has Christian significance for their country. And near this time of the year, the Slovaks will be cleaning up their cemeteries, uh, raking the leaves, cutting the grass, making sure the place looks neat and clean. Then on or near All Saints Day, they will go as a family to the cemetery to place flowers and candles at the grave of loved ones. Sometimes individuals and families will travel to cemeteries in other cities or villages where their ancestors are buried, and which we experienced when we lived in Bratislava, which, was the capital, which is the capital city. It was fairly deserted over those holidays as so many traveled home to observe with their families. Well, I have some pictures I want to show you from this. So they put out lots of candles and flowers and I love taking pictures. So this is one group of uh, candles at one of the tombs. And this is, uh, you can't quite see it, but it's an angel that is somebody's gravestone. And you can see all the lights that are around it. More flowers and candles that I thought were just beautiful. And another tombstone you can see there, they have their pictures on the tombstone there. And this is um, a picture of the cemetery as a whole that you can see how many of the candles are lit. And I think I have one more. Okay, and this I want to tell you about. If you are in a place where your ancestors are not buried, but you also want to light a candle, then you just light it at the entry gates. And so this is one of the gates and a person lighting the candles right there at the entryway. And there's just candles everywhere. And as we, thank you, Jamie. And as we walked through the cemetery, it was a sacred, quiet time. People were talking, and, uh, but very quietly. And this went on for several nights. And so each night we would walk through and experience this in awe and wonder. One of the things is that the families then tell their stories of the loved one who has passed and tell of their traditions and their cultures. Excuse me. I caught a cold last week. But it's all good. It was from hugging my grandson. <laughs> this kind of cold, I don't really mind having. So All Saints Day throughout the world is celebrated on November 1st. But we traditionally here in the Lutheran Church celebrate it on the Sunday following Reformation Sunday rather than on the actual date. In our gospel lesson today, there's a lesson pointed at we saints and sinners we're all alike in that way. Jesus' teaching, and it's called Sermon on the Plain, or as we read, on a level place, sounds a lot like Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. There are significant differences, however. Luke includes about half of the Beatitudes found in Matthew. And honestly, Matthew's list is quite reassuring and probably preferable to Luke's list, which... Um, Matthews has only blessings. How many of us squirmed when listening to that list of woes from Jesus' sermon in Luke? One commentator suggested that any pastor who preaches on this text would do well to put on a hard hat and protective gear because there is no way to approach these blessings without hearing the woes that go with them. So what do these blessings and woes have to do with living like saints of God? Well, Jesus, honestly, Jesus with his topsy-turvy way of thinking and talking and teaching brings it once again to us. Blessed are you who are poor. Blessed you who are hungry. Blessed are you who weep now. Blessed are you when people hate you. What? 
What? And then the opposites. Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are full. Woe to you who are laughing now. Woe to you when all speak well of you. Did you notice the opposites there? That he does just the opposites. Blessed are you who are poor. Woe to you who are rich. Blessed to you who are hungry. Woe to you who are full. Blessed are you who weep now. Woe to you who are laughing now. Blessed are you when people hate you. Woe to you when all speak well of you. Jesus, you're making us crazy with this topsy-turvy, upside-down way of teaching. But here's the thing. The blessings come out of when we seek God. The woes come out of seeking ourselves and what's good for us. I like what one pastor calls these the Beatitudes and the woeitudes. And they each point to this, that we are blessed when we seek God, regardless of our earthly circumstances. And we find woe when we are self-satisfied instead of hungry for God. When Jesus blesses the poor, the hungry, those mourning, those ridiculed, he isn't saying that we should all aspire to that, to poverty, hunger, sorrow, or being verbally abused. No. He's saying that God is present with us, even when the world treats us poorly. God loves us even when others hate us, or we hate ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. As saints of God, we find blessing in seeking God, yearning for God, hungering and thirsting for God, and loving those whom God loves, which is everybody. When Jesus announces woes to those who are re rich, who eat well, who enjoy fame, adoration, or admiration from others, he isn't saying that the wealth, good food, and popularity are bad things. He is saying this, that when we start to take material blessings for granted, or worse, when we think that we somehow acquired these gifts by our own efforts alone, we abandon God, and our self-dependence will be our spiritual downfall. And then we come to verse 27. But I say to you, remember that whenever he says, I say to you, we have to pay attention because there's going to be something strong in there. Listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. So no matter what, which camp you put yourself in up to now, whether blessed or in the woes or the woebegones, neither of us, none of us, can escape Christ's direct commands. We are all here, right now, hearing the word of God, hearing the word of the Lord together. And there's no avoiding this one. Each one of us, every one of us, is being told to love our enemies. Bless the people who curse us and do good to the very people who hate us. That's a challenge, isn't it? Love our enemies. Bless the people who curse us and do good to the very people who hate us. A side note here, though. Too often these verses have been quoted to teach people in abusive relationships that it was their Christian duty to stay. And turn the other cheek. Pray for the abuser. Pray for um, and forgive the abuser. Too often I have heard stories that make me shudder. One where a spouse, a partner, a child, or friend was told that if they just worked harder, prayed harder, were more understanding, the abuse wouldn't occur. Or even worse, that they were sacrificing themselves for the abuser as Christ sacrificed himself for us. No, no, no. Think of all the times that Jesus sided with the marginalized 
warning against hurting the children, seeking out the woman at the well. Just last week, we heard about Zacchaeus and Jesus choosing him, and Jesus choosing him out of all of the others and in front of all of the others to say that salvation came to his house today. Time and time again, Jesus held up the downtrodden as those who should be loved and honored. So I believe that these words point to Jesus upending the culture of his day and maybe ours and turning the tables on us, reminding us that God's kingdom has different rules than our secular culture. The things that the world values, wealth, fame, strength, power, these have little meaning in the kingdom of God where love, mercy, and compassion mean everything. However, doing all of these things that we heard, love, bless, pray, turn, give, do, guess what? These are not a ticket into sainthood. If we do them just perfectly and think we might be ready to polish our crown, we realize Christ's command to love our enemies is not born out of our own sainthood. That sainthood, that is bestowed on us by the love of God alone, not by anything that we have done that we think we might deserve it. We are saints precisely because we are sinners, sinners who have been forgiven and loved and graced into sainthood, even in spite of ourselves. It has nothing to do with what we do and everything to do with who God is. God loves us. God made us for this purpose so that God could love us and we could love God. God loves us enough to forgive us for being satisfied with ourselves. God loves us enough for eating too many scrumptious meals while others go hungry. God loves us for protecting our, when we protect our wealth, while others have nothing. Standing up for ourselves while ignoring injustice all around us. Yes, God loves us enough to forgive us for everything we have ever done to separate ourselves from the Holy Trinity, from God. If we only ask for forgiveness, God loves us enough to transform us from sinners into saints again and again and again. We join the great company of saints who have gone before us and the great company of saints who will come after us, all of us forgiven, all of us loved to our very core. We come together around this table to remember that God's love isn't limited by our standards. And thank goodness for that. In God's Son, Jesus Christ, God set and is setting a new standard. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hurt you. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Do to others as God has already done for you. Not so you can become a saint, but because you already are. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to come forward for this part. Let us pray. Blessed be the memory of these saints of God who lived and worked among us, our companions in our pilgrimage of faith who have found their rest in God. Amen. Paul Alexander. Darlene Moland. Oh.
Carl Nuremberger. Tammy Perella. Jim Fisher. Cheryl Champ. Vincent Newhouse. Mary Frances Sikorka. Mike Blaylock. Val Abney. Bev Gerlock. Rose Galley. Carrie Godwin. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing, and if any of you would like to come and light a candle, you're welcome to do that as well. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world.
for the church and its leaders that we continue to proclaim the gospel of salvation to every corner of the earth so that all embody the hope of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. For the well-being of creation, for the seas and their creatures, for those preparing for changing weather, and for those who serve as good students, stewards of God's gifts. Lord, in your mercy. During this election season, raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle in them a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good, and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy. For the troubled and terrified, the poor and hungry, the abused and the abuser, those who weep, those suffering from sickness, especially those on LCM's prayer list, and for those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of generosity, abundant hospitality, and intentional inclusion among us, welcoming the gifts of adults and children. Inspire creative visions for our life together. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Second Corinthians 9 reads, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheer cheerful giver. In this and other scriptures, we see that the amount we give isn't the most important thing. The giver's heart and attitude is what matters. So when we give to others, whether it's to those in need or to the work of the Lord's kingdom, we should do so with joy and thanksgiving because God loves a cheerful giver. And if you'll join with me in this prayer. Our ancestors and faith gathered together long ago to remember, to be restored, to be renewed. They shared their story, prayed together, and made an offering to God as they prepared to set out on the long journey to freedom in the promised land. Today we gather to remember and to pray together to be restored and renewed. And we bring our own offerings so the ministry of this church will continue to participate in the saving works of God. Let us offer our gifts to God in gratitude and praise. And I've added an offering song in the service. Larissa will play it through once and then we'll sing it together.
As we embrace renewed life in Christ, let us extend signs of peace and unity to one another. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share that peace with one another. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for the glory and joy of creation, for the work of reconciliation, for the promise of love eternal, and for those who walk with us. So we offer you the words of a song sung by angels and saints joining our voices to the great cloud of witnesses as we say these words. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God. Blessed is your son, Jesus, our host at this table. Blessed is your spirit who settles in us and among us, and within these gifts of bread and cup, transforming them, making them sacred, and filling not for our bodies, but for our souls. So with gratitude and praise, we come to your table, ready to be filled, ready to be sent out, ready to be your people in the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We lift our prayer to you using the words recited by all generations. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This table is for all of us, near and far, high and low, east and west, north and south. This table is for all of us, but it is not our table. It's not a Lutheran table. It's not an American table. It is God's table. And one for all of us, a table of grace. So come and take your place at this table. You are welcome. You are invited. You are called. You are included. Come, let us share this meal together. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power, this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to stand for the ascending song.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be a blessing in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.